I know many of you have been waiting with bated breath for the next update on the electric turbo and I have to apologize for that. Uh, my time has largely been taken up with some complete and utter nonsense related to uh, my dad's passing in his estate, but that's not really what's important. What's important is for you guys to know that progress has been made on the electric turbo. Uh, towards that end, before we get to these pretty things here, uh, I wanted to say it's, it's time to step up and put on our big boy pants. By that I mean this is the connector that's on the end of each battery pack that we've been using up till now, those, those LiPo RC battery packs. These are the largest connectors that I'm using in the entire system. These are 8mm bullets, right? Well. Again, putting on our big boy pants, it's time to start using things like this. I can't even get that to balance, can I? Let's see. Yes, there you go. So we have a sense of comparison, right? EC5, EC8, Anderson power pole rated at 175 amps, but that's 175 amps live during the connection and disconnection process. These things are huge, they're massive, they're also ubiquitous, and these are real. These are not Chinese knockoffs. I do have a Chinese knockoff, but the purpose of that is solely going to be to charge these giant packs. Uh, these things are, are massive. If you've never worked with them before, they have these huge connections and they, they slide over each other. So this is what's going to be used on these. So let's talk about these things. So I decided, you know, I could either spend some money and go on a really nice short Caribbean vacation, or I could spend the same amount of money and invest in what is called in Canada a cubic fuck ton of LTO cells. These. Uh, I realized that I would need at least 28 in series to make 70 volts. Uh, and there's there's another issue that's been at play. So if, if you go back and you look at our videos, you see that our starting voltage is right around 67, 67.2, somewhere in that ballpark. Uh, and that's with the batteries fully charged. If we look at a lithium, uh, specifically a lipo discharge curve, you can see that it typically starts out really high, but then falls off fast. And our voltage drop has been, in a word, kind of extreme. It's been a bit high. And while that's, you know, okay, technically speaking, it's also keeping us from reaching max power. So I decided to throw a whole bunch of money at a whole bunch of LTO cells, lithium titanate oxide. Now, why LTO cells? Well, they have a bunch of advantages. There's some disadvantages, but they have a bunch of advantages. And the biggest advantages are they're very fast to charge because you can charge them at insane rates, but they're also, they also have an incredibly high discharge rating. These cells here are rated for a continuous discharge of 900 amps. They have a theoretical peak of about 2300 amps based on their internal resistance. That's insane. These also have less power variation based on temperature, so there's no need for heating or cooling the pack probably, but it shouldn't be an issue. Plus, they have at least 10 times the cycle life, whereas the average LiPo pack may be good for 3,000 cycles. If you're lucky, these are good for 30,000, so these should be good for probably the rest of my life. Uh, you know, another thing that's interesting that I didn't realize, to me, these were new technology, but it turns out these are some of the oldest types of lithium batteries. In fact, they're referred to as industry titans because they're used in everything uh, from electric cars, uh, specifically Honda Insight owners have sort of glommed onto these these things they're repowering those things and they're sticking LTO cells in there uh, and you know car audio guys use them when they want to go deaf uh, you know and medical devices because they last forever and they're also inherently safe that that's been another issue what we're doing is dangerous enough so so like the threat of explosion or fire really kind of just adds to the fun factor but that's not really the fun factor we're interested in these don't do that so these have 18 amp hours each but we're gonna test that quote project form uh, but this is what I'm thinking of as an initial pack now I do have a 14 SBMS this is 14 cells and they're all in series uh, in fact this is the negative and this is the po ah I'm just kidding it's the extra boom that's it's only 36 volts or so in fact let's let's show you what it is so these these batteries I did charge individually because I did not use uh, I haven't hooked up the BMS yet so we're at 37.08 volts so roughly 37 volts 
I made up a whole ton of these guys here. Uh, you know, and the little hole here, by the way, is for the bolt for a little screw for the BMS so they can balance the cells during charging. Uh, I did individually charge all 14 of these, which took a lot of time, but again, I was tied up with nonsense. So there you go. These fit nicely in these cases from Horror Freight that you can buy, and those cases fit nicely right over the rear axle in the trunk of the LTD. It's the perfect spot. Uh, they do weigh more. That's a disadvantage. They have a lower power density than uh, lipo cells or lithium polymer ion cells. So they're... they're uh, Whereas these have a density of 50 to 80 watts per kilogram, lipos are typically like 250 to 430 watts per kilogram. So these are only about a quarter as power dense as lipos. They're also expensive uh, and they have a lower cell voltage. It's only nominally 2.3 volts for cell, although these, these are kind of rated at 2.5 volts for cell. I kind of think that's per cell, that's kind of a nonsense rating. Uh, you know, 3.6 volts is nominal for a lipo cell. So that's why we need more of these guys. But the advantages, I think, vastly outweigh the disadvantages. I'm not gonna be satisfied until that TP power motor is fully saturated until we've maxed it out. It's rated at 52 volts, but if we look at the data logs uh, in a previous video that I posted, we actually went through the data logs and we saw that we were, I, I think if memory serves me, around 48 volts. So that's not, you know, that's there's still some room to play there. And uh, the guys at APD, the guys who made that ESC have looked at it and said, yeah, there's still some power left in the motor. So I wanna be able to extract all of it because by gum dag nabbit, we're running nines if it kills me. So let's do some testing. This is in theory, uh, one of the packs I'm thinking of, but I may go up to a 15 cell pack. I alluded to the discharge curve before. I wanna be in the meat of the discharge curve, you know, where it kind of flat lines. And the whole idea with that is, if you're in the point where it's flat lining, as you draw power out of the batteries, the output power of the electric turbo is not going to drop quite as dramatically. It's gonna, it should be more of a straight line for, you know, however many pulls that we need to do on the dyno or passes at the drag strip. I did buy enough of these to make two sets of two packs. That's 56 cells if we want to go with uh, 28 per, or if we wanna go with uh, 30 each, then that would be a total of 60. That's that's actually the number I bought. Now there's a few issues with some of the cells. I'm not gonna get into that. Uh, you know, we're gonna test them and you know, maybe I have to pick up a few extras or whatever. Maybe I just don't need a second set of packs. That may be a thing. And then we'll have, you know, LTO cells to, I don't know, put in a white and nerdy. <laughs> that thing's been sitting in my shed unridden for like over a year now. So let's do some discharge testing on these. Let's see. Uh, exactly what the capacity is. There's been some rumors that there's people around selling sort of knockoffs of these cells that are truly only rated at 16 amp hours. These are rated at 18 amp hours. We're gonna do a test right around 0.2 C, so two tenths of 18. So that's what, that's like, you know, around three and a half-ish amps. Uh, this is the power meter I'm gonna be using. I don't know if it could comfortably go up to that, but I may be right around three amps uh, the whole time. And we're gonna see the capacity. So there you go, that's our test. That's where we stand right now. Let's uh, go ahead and run the test. I've got to rearrange a few things here. Okay, so here we are, we're set up. Uh, I've connected this pack of death to this uh, power meter. I, if I'm gonna be completely honest, I made a little bit of a boo-boo and did not hit record on this camera, even though I've been recording on that one over there. But we are drawing three and a half amps. It's about 130 watts. I have to keep tabs on this thing, make sure it doesn't overheat. So I may end up dropping the current draw a bit. In fact, let's pull it back right now because that's a little bit much. Uh, we started out at 37 volts indicated on here. This is about a tenth of a volt low. Uh, as, as this test goes on, by the way, I'm going to be checking the, the voltage of the individual cells. I don't want, you know, whichever cell is the weakest is the one that's going to drop down first. So I need to keep tabs on those, particularly as we get closer to the end of the, the current draw test. But I want to try to stay right around 3 amps-ish, which is around 100 watts-ish. And that should be pretty good. It's 110 watts right now, but obviously as the battery voltage drops, 
then you know the the current will also drop or the, the I'm sorry the wattage will also drop because that's a function of voltage times current so I'll be back with the results we're gonna let this cook and hopefully not catch fire all right here's the first update it's an hour and 15 minutes in uh, approximately uh, we've drawn almost four amp hours out of the thing and we're down about what less than a volt and a half or so uh, I've actually added this other cooling fan right here just to keep the uh, power sink, whatever it is that's happening underneath this giant cooling fan, uh, to keep it a little bit cooler because it was tipping the scales a little hotter than I would like to see right now. It's 64 degrees Celsius. I may turn it up just a touch to be a little closer to 120 watts make this move a little faster if nothing else that's really the reason but you know it's a fairly strong pack by all indications this is going to take a while i'll be back at the next whatever update it's going to be there's a huge storm brewing outside so hopefully the power doesn't go out we're just past the three hour mark on this discharge test and we're just over 10 amp hours of draw and we are running just under 0.2c which is generally how these things are tested uh i did do uh, a current test uh, just to see how accurate this thing is and it appears to be reasonably accurate in fact let's do a voltage test i believe it's going to be about a tenth of a volt off but let's take a look here let's see if i can sneak this in without shorting anything out and blocking anything you guys need to see so we're at 34.76 and we're showing 34.6 34.7 it kind of bounces around a little bit so it's reasonably close I'd say it's certainly close enough for government work by the way if you want to get yourself one of these meters I'm going to put a link in the uh, description below to my Amazon affiliate link it helps me pay for all this stuff which would be mightily appreciated but now would be a really good time to see how balanced these cells are there is no BMS it's just a pack so let's measure the individual voltage of each cell and see where we end up they're all they're going to alternate with a positive and negative symbol because I'm not going to flip the you know the the tester leads for every cell it's going to take forever all right so the first cell 2 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2.4 2
2.3. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop the test here. Now they did all pass because there is 18 and a half amp hour capacity. However, there's a couple that failed first and it happened quick. Like I went from like 33 volts down to 27.6 like that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I did mention there were some issues with some of these cells uh, that's been worked out. Uh, and some of those cells actually ended up in this pack. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to mark those cells, uh, pull them aside, and uh, simply not use them for this. I'm going to just select the 28 strongest cells for my two packs. And that's what I'm going to use to make this thing. So. I'm going to go through all this, I'm going to do the same test with the rest of the cells, there's 60 of them in total, and uh, we're just going to select the best of the best for this and leave the, the others as sort of, you know, like grade B rejects, if you will, and we can use them on other things because clearly they do have capacity and they are still pretty strong, it's just the others are stronger still. The one that's at 30 millivolts does bother me, but again, there were some issues with some of the cells. So. I'm going to go ahead and do that and then we're going to build out the packs and there's going to be lots more testing, lots more videos coming up so be sure to ring the bell and subscribe and I will catch you in the next one. And of course the wheelie bar mark. <laughs> yeah, you're so proud of yourself on that.